We start off on our knees like this, and I'm going to just move slightly sideways so that I'm still end up on the mat, and I'm going to put this foot in a position so it's well in front of my knee. I'm going to tuck the tail, push this knee back so that my hips are effectively square, or in other words, in the same plane as my shoulders, and go to the side like this. Now what will amaze you if you keep the tail tucked is that when you go to the side here, only one tiny part of the leg gets any kind of a stretch at all. Now if you're more flexible and you need a bit more stretch, then put in all of these positions, put the hand on the hip here, just watch, and push your body sideways like this. But in the beginning, you're probably going to find that this will be quite strong enough. Contractions can be done, not in this contract relax sense, but in terms of using these muscles to pull myself deeper into the stretch at any point around this compass. We call this boxing the compass because we're going north, south, east, west, all the way around the compass. So just watch, I'm going to let myself go closer to the floor. I'm drawing myself with this muscle by pulling my whole body towards this heel. I relax, I take a breath in, I retuck the tail and sink down if I need more. I push off to the side like this. And so without me actually saying that, I'm going to do this all the way around. Now here's the key to this boxing the compass exercise. When I just make this tiny movement with the leg like this, this just tiny movement, now when I go into this position here, the stretch changes completely to a different muscle. And, watch, that is now a completely different muscle. So we basically, the boxing the compass means we simply turn this leg and go all the way around the body. So let me just show you what that looks like. Position one, position two, contract position three. Now we're coming around to what looks more like a hip flexor stretch. That's on the inside of the top of the leg here. Now we're actually in the formal hip flexor stretch position. I'm pulling myself forward with both arms and the hamstring muscle. And then watch, I roll around a little bit further. Now I'm facing away from you and you can see the lovely Jim Baguette t-shirt. And all the way around to the side, and you'll, this all the way around to the side position you'll see um, Craig also duplicates in a Yuri Cossack sequence. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get this hip here as close to the ground as possible. If you have short arms, you can definitely put your hand up on a block. Uh, or I'm, in my case, mine are long enough to actually get a decent stretch. This is what it looks like, and I can straighten the bottom leg as well, which I'm doing now, and also lean in this direction towards this foot. That finishes off that part. So if I come around again and sh go all the way back to the start position, that's the compass. So now let me show you what that looks like on the other side. Again, make sure the foot's far enough forward, tuck the tail, make sure the spine is as straight as you can get it, and this foot is pointing straight back. That's the start position. So I'm just gently, I'm letting my body's weight and with a bit of muscular effort on the hamstrings here to pull myself into this position a bit deeper. I'm also doing a few rocking movements. I didn't show you that on the other side, but I've lately found that these, well, Liv calls them micro movements and Robert Schweik's wife uses the same expression, but these little movements here, they really seem to work on the fascia and they definitely change the way the position feels. Or, that another thing I could do a genuine contraction where I'm going to try and pull this knee to the heel like this, just watch. Three, two, one, stop. Breathe in. Pull deeper. Press and lever to get the strongest possible stretch. And then do little movements in those positions. Push myself out a tiny bit. Internally rotate this leg. And repeat. Now today, this particular line here, it's exactly what my body needs. So another way of looking at this is don't think about these exercises as a sequence to be just routinely done from beginning to end. What they really are is an exploration of what your body is feeling like today. And this line for me today is definitely a line that I need to work on. So I'll do a contraction, I'll go a bit deeper, lean further away, and then this is a, an associated line, this is also very tight today. Then the hip flexor position, so then roll onto the outside a bit more, wriggle, pull, turn, 
lower, turn, lower, straighten the, the, the bottom leg, this leg here, lower, push back to the heel, this heel here I mean. And I'm going to go back to the first side and show you one other part. So, when you're in this position here, so the hip flexor stretch position, you can pull back on your hands and make it a super strong hip flexor stretch and then watch, take a breath in and lower your uh, face and chest to the ground, keeping the hips level and that will be an awesome glute stretch on the front leg. So I'll do that on the other side as well. So, and in the ground, hip flexor stretch position, pull to get that hip flexor effect, take a breath in. And make sure the hips are as level as you can get them. Now, there are honestly hundreds more movements you can do in those positions, but this will get you started. The key idea is no matter how you turn the back leg or the side leg, the one that we're leaning away from, every little position that you turn it in can expose a new tight line for you. And your task is to find that tight line and then to work through it and relax it as much as you can.